Okay, so to the Academy Get It Right, we've got John DeVore from The Pulse. He is the film critic there to come in and talk about this. What do you think? Did they get it right? I, as far as the movies that came out this year, yeah, I think that uh, they, they got most of them right. Uh, there are a couple that are in the best picture category that I don't know what I would have included, but I'm also not sure what I would have replaced them with. So, uh, you know, th films like Les Mis or Django Unchained, I thought that Django Unchained was maybe a little bit unfinished. I don't know that it necessarily deserves it. And Les Mis was good, but not quite good enough as, in terms of the other uh, movies in the category. But uh, the, as, as far as most of them, and I've seen all of them but three, okay. um, I, I think that they, they did a good job on the best picture category. And let's talk about that. Which ones you, are you favoring at this point for best picture? Well, obviously, you know, a couple weeks ago I did my best of, and they all ended up being all nominated for Oscars. Um, my favorite is, is Life of Pi. Um, I think it should win. I don't think it will. Um, I, my guess is likely that um, either Lincoln or Argo will win Best Picture. Um, I think Life of Pi is more of a visual movie and it doesn't have quite the content back, backing that the other two movies do. Now, is it becoming more of a, of a, of a publicity campaign on who's going to win, do you think? And that's always been the case for several years now. Or do you think it's just going to come down to what the, the Academy people think is going to be better? Oh, there's really no way to tell. Um, it is mostly a publicity campaign, especially now that uh, people can lobby to get their movies right. into the categories or into the nominations. So the, it's not always necessarily the best movies that came out. However, this year I do think that, that it, it's probably going to be based on the, the content and, and the movie itself. Okay, let's talk about the best actor category. We saw a number of the people that were uh, in that movie. Is there anything that's standing out to you in the best actor category? Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, Daniel I mean, Day-Lewis, he's, he's going to win. Uh, there's, there's, you, you can quote me on that, that's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Day-Lewis is the best actor probably in the world. Um, I can't think of anybody else in the category that is at all giving a performance that he gives in Lincoln. What about best actress? What do you think? Sally Field maybe? Lincoln or not? I really like Sally Field in, in uh, that part. Um, however, it might go to Anne Hathaway. Well, no, she was in supporting actress, so it right. won't go to her, but I think she will win for supporting. Um, uh, I would really like it to go to the, the nine-year-old girl. I think that would be really nice. However, I've not seen Be Beasts of the Southern Wild, so I don't know. Okay. Well, let's talk about the actual uh, other things that are going. We talked uh, in that last report, we saw that there's some people that were not uh, nominated as far as for the, for the director, Catherine Bigelow, uh, Ben Affleck for Argo, the guy from Les Mis. Shocking to you? Or there's been a lot of backlash for Zero Dark Thirty. Right. Uh, th that may be part of why uh, Catherine Bigelow was not nominated. She's going to be testifying in front of a student Senate hearing about uh, her involvement in the classified information that was released and that sort of thing. So that might be why. As far as Ben Affleck, I don't know why he wasn't nominated. I would think that this would be his year. Uh, this is his third really big movie. He's a fantastic director. I think that uh, he really deserves it. So I don't know why he wasn't nominated. As far as Tom Hooper, I, I can't think of what else he's done. I thought Les Mis was good, but probably not best director. And uh, you didn't think that uh, Steven Spielberg was going to get it for Lincoln, though? Um, I, would rather it, I, it's, I, I would rather it go to somebody that's not Steven Spielberg. Just because, you know, Steven Spielberg is this big name, I would like it to go to somebody who is, is up and coming. All right, let's talk about the actual award ceremony itself. Seth MacFarlane is the host. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I mean, I liked Billy Crystal. I know he got some flack from some people, but I like the traditional Billy Crystal types. What do you think about Seth MacFarlane? I'm, I'm sure he'll do fine. Um, he, he, I, I doubt that he's going to go as far as, say, Ricky Gervais on the, on with, the Golden with, Globes. Yeah, uh, but I, I think he might bring a little bit uh, more modern humor to it. Um, and I, he, he has a background in, in, in show business type uh, big band uh, right. things. So I'm looking forward to seeing that because he, he has a very nice singing voice and I think it'll be very good to see that in the, the Oscar show. And that's one of the things people have criticized in the past is there's just too much musical numbers but with Seth MacFarlane it seems like we're guaranteed we're going to get some, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely we are. Um, and I, I, I'm actually I'm a fan of the musical numbers. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of the, the ceremony itself. I like to see the stuff in between and I, I'll, I'll watch it but I do think it goes on a little bit long. You know, three or four hours is a little <laughs> yeah. bit much. Well, John, I appreciate you coming in to talk about all these movies for us, and we'll see you again soon, I am sure. All right. And we'll be right back to pick a winner for the World of Wheels tickets, so stick around for that.